What's happening, Hello, my friend? How you doing? Good. How are we doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm excited. What are we doing today? We're going to go check out some spaces. You ready to rock? I think I'm good to go. All right, let's, let's do it. We are driving around checking out some spaces. Some, some future rewild spaces. It just needs to be a space that works that that doesn't cost a million bucks to build out so ideally it's an existing restaurant space that we can get in there quickly and it, it's balancing both both money to where our following is to where we want to be with you know what actually makes sense you know we've obviously developed our following on the south shore um so but you're also kind of trying to figure out if there's the right space available on the South Shore. So um, there's a lot of things that come into play. You know, we can find empty spaces just about everywhere, but it's going to cost us twice as much. The size has got to be right. Um, you know, somewhere around like 4,000 square feet, ideally. Initially, I kind of just look at the space as a whole. Do I think it's big enough, sort of open enough to transform into kind of a beer hall setting that's kind of number one and then number two it's like you know what what existing infrastructure is there that we can leverage to cut down on our costs space that has at least like a hood system and things like that that sort of the expensive pieces of a restaurant that are there um, ideally walk-in coolers and draft systems and a lot of them, I wish they were just set up in a more uh, efficient manner. It's kind of crazy to, and I guess that's probably why some of the places we're looking at are going out of business because you walk in and um, it's just not, the setup of it just doesn't make sense. So a lot of them, it's like, God, I wish they put the kitchen here and the bar here. That would have made a lot more sense for what we're trying to do. So um, I still have not seen a space that I've been like, I want to move in. I like the the creative aspect of you know seeing a space that doesn't look anything like you want it to look and then kind of envisioning what it could be but it's definitely a little stressful too because it's like you just want a space and be able to get going but I have rushed into spaces before so um, I know it takes some, some time and some patience to uh, make the right call. Definitely, yeah, it's so important to be patient. It's like, you just want to go, but you almost have to be okay with the fact it's going to take time. There's going to be, you know, long waits just to see spaces and just to, you know, get a meeting with the landlord and everything just takes time. So. Yeah, you definitely need to be patient or you're you're going to probably make a, a bad decision. We are here. I'm going to leave you here though because I, uh, I can't tell you where we're looking. There's too many options right now. So I'll be back in like 20 minutes. I'll keep you posted. All right. It's cool. It's a good spot. Good spot. Let's, uh, let's grab a coffee. A lot of people have been asking what happened in Quincy. So basically when we signed the lease, we were told, we knew the building was getting torn down, but we were told by the landlord, we get minimum one year, most likely closer to two. So we thought that'd be an awesome way to, you know, start the concept, get into an existing restaurant space cheap. Um, and, you know, two years down the road, we'd, you know, be in a great position to move to a permanent space and there'd be more spaces in Quincy Center done as well. So about two months in after signing the lease and we're going through liquor licenses and building out the space, um, we found out that that timeline was a lot shorter um, and that it was more like six months. So we, you know, obviously had to adjust what we were doing. 
Um, we had already put some money into the space, so we didn't feel like pulling out of it. Um, and we worked out something with the town, and the town was great. A lot of people saying like the city of Quincy gave us a hard time, and that's not the case. They were awesome. Um, and we worked out. That's why we had only liquor on, you know, twice a week because we were buying one day permits. So that's what that deal was there. And yeah, so then we kind of pivoted into okay, let's try to get open and make this more of a pop up to test the concept and make sure we're on the right track, find out the menu items people like, get our processes down and everything like that. You know, we had to be out of there most likely by early March. Uh, January, February are typically the worst months in hospitality. So, you know, we didn't want to get to that point and not know what we were doing. You know, ideally we can find something and be ready for the summer. We didn't want to miss that opportunity. So that's why we chose to leave January uh, in January when we did and get to a permanent space because we're going to have to do that eventually anyway and I really found, found that we, you know, found that niche of making plant-based food accessible and approachable to more people and um, it was awesome seeing that. I mean, it definitely validated what we're doing. The last three days we were open, we ran out of everything we had and we had a lot of food. People were really making the trip to come and support us and um, have been very uh, outspoken about, you know, wanting to see us succeed and help. So it was un unbelievable, unbelievable experience. And uh, you know, I just see it as a, a stepping stone now that I could obviously, you know, be pissed off at sort of the situation and um, what happened. But that doesn't that doesn't help anything going forward. You know, it's it's a uh, you can choose to dwell on the negative aspects of it or you can take the positives from it and say hey that was a relatively cheap way to see if we can run a successful restaurant you know it's a great brand builder it's a great marketing tool um, and it's not the last time we're gonna get punched in the face you know that's that's the game and it's how you respond to kind of the the bad things that sometimes occur that you know make make the future possible and, we know the concept works, we know the demand's there. Um, so there's, you know, we're gonna face more hurdles and we'll just get through them and that's, you know, we know what our vision is and we'll get there eventually. My hope is to be open for the summer month. That is admittedly a little aggressive, but, you know, we, in Quincy, we signed a lease June 1 and we're open in October, so four months. So if we can have a lease by February, March at the latest, um, we'll be able to make that happen. The next decision we make has to be the right one um, or you know nothing else works going forward so we got to get it right so it's worth taking the time but the goal is to be able to for summer. Success with something is more about like being able to withstand kind of the, the down times and the times things aren't going well like your ability to stay positive and withstand those times I think lead to you having success more so than like you know the wins of it all. You have the choice to say is this happening for me or is it happening to me right and if you can focus on all right this is happening for a reason this is all part of the story this is part of the journey you know there's a there's a lesson here there's a there's a takeaway here um, and you can focus on that then everything becomes a win. I can blame other people for not being honest and things like that, but you know, at the end of the day, it was my, it's on me. It was my decision to sign a lease. It was my decision to go there. And so I can't be mad at anybody else. You know, I, I if I wanted to really do more of a due diligence, I'm sure I could have. If I could do it again, what would I do different? I would have been more patient. I would have been more patient. Um, you know, we wanted so bad, and obviously, like, there's money decisions tied to that, right? You're at a point where everybody's on board, and you're you're paying people, and there's a there's a runway where you need to find a space, or you're in trouble. Um, but you definitely need to be patient, and I will admit I hastily kind of jumped into Quincy because not only did did it 
did I think it made sense, but it was it was really the first space I saw that I felt fit what we wanted to do. And I wish from the onset I would have taken more of a long-term approach to things. Um, I was just eager to get going and obviously we were spending money, so, um, but, you know, lesson learned, right? Telling the people that have believed in you from day one, that have given you their money, their trust from the outset before, when everything was just a vision, right? Um, that, you know, there's, there's a, a kink in, in there's, a, there's a wrench being thrown into everything. Um, that's the hardest conversation. At the same time, you need to step back and say, hey, well, you know, at the same time, I am giving those people an opportunity. Um, and I have to remind myself of that, that I'm also providing them value with, you know, their money and an opportunity for, you know, a chunk of their money to hopefully be worth 10 20, 30, 40x in 10 years. So um, you have to remind yourself of that side too, but I'm always talking positively. I'm always, look, here's here's all the wins from Quincy. Here's, you know, we established a brand, we grew the brand, we proved this can work. We, you know, now have an email list of 2,500 people and um, a real brand and national news. And like, that's what I focus on um, to investors. Everybody knows restaurants are a hard business, right? It's a low margin, you know, business that has so many different variables. And again, that hasn't deterred us from the start. We know there are successful restaurant concepts out there. We can be one of them, you know, so that's never deterred us. I am super excited for the future. And I guess what I will say that came from Quincy is my confidence is higher than it's ever been. I know exactly what we need to do to execute and I know that I know that it will work and um, I am so excited because I know we're filling a void that you know especially on the East Coast is missing and yeah the the, the goal has not changed and now you know after Quincy it's just all it's done for me is boosted my confidence um, and boosted our team's confidence we know each other better now we know how things work we know what customers like we know we can do it and we've proven that people want it and the goal still the still the goal you know we're gonna we're gonna have 10 in the next five to seven years